Welcome back to the Commercial Real Estate Show. I'm Michael Ball. Thanks for being with us today. Today we're talking about multifamily, the apartment industry. Please welcome my next guest. It's Jay Maderi. Jay is CEO of JVM Realty, and he's uh, joining us on the phone today. Jay, thanks for being with us. Hi, thanks for inviting me on the show, Michael. Well, Jay, to get us started, tell us a little bit about what you guys do at JVM Realty. Uh, what uh, size properties and uh, geographic areas you cover? Sure. JVM uh, Realty owns and operates class A and B garden style in mid-rise apartment communities and secondary and tertiary midwest uh, markets across the greater midwestern area. Our current portfolio uh, is located in uh, suburban Chicago. We're in Cleveland, Indianapolis, Kansas City, and Tulsa, Oklahoma. Okay. And, you know, looking at that kind of Midwest area, is there a certain advantage to you guys and to your investors of uh, investing in those markets? I know we talked to a lot of people on the show, and they're on the East Coast and the West Coast. Sure. Um, well, our investors are primarily high net worth individuals um, that we've developed relationships with over many years. And so we, we raise the equity from them directly and privately. Um, our, our investment strategy is, is focused on, on four things. Uh, well, number one is we're, we're, we think we can find higher returns within the Midwestern secondary markets. Uh, cash flow is, is king for our investor base. Our investors are interested in appreciation, but looking for immediate cash flow from day one. So we found some really strong opportunities to create both of those in these uh, secondary and tertiary Midwestern markets. Um, we also find less volatility in the Midwest, both the highs and the lows. Uh, this is historically been a cyclical business, as you know, and we found that in the Midwest, while we don't see the highs, as you may see in some of the coastal and core markets, we don't see uh, the dramatic lows in the downturns either. So it's very steady. Uh, we also find less competition from institutional, international investors, pension funds, and some of the larger REITs that are chasing assets in those primary and core markets, uh, be it in the east or southeast or the west. Uh, as pri- with private investment dollars, it's hard to compete on, on both the terms and pricing, um, given that some of those investors have lower return hurdles. Uh, third is pricing. Because of that competition, uh, we see cap rates c- compressing in those gateway and, and core markets. Uh, we see cap rates in our Midwestern markets that are, are typically 50 to 100 basis points higher uh, than those other markets. And since we have access to the same you know, great financing in this environment. Uh, we're able to produce higher yields for our investors. And then finally, uh, we're a fully integrated uh, apartment uh, management company from the identifying of the investments, creating the strategy. We also execute on the asset management and property management side. And so since we are hands-on, our uh, appreciation in our communities comes from managing expenses and optimizing the revenue. And with our headquarters in the Chicago area, we're centrally located and allows allows us to have close contact and give support to our portfolio. Right. Well, those are some good reasons to focus on that area. When you think about investing in apartments, most people are, you know, first and primarily looking for cash flow, right? And so if you can get a cap rate that's 50 to 100 basis points higher, I mean, you're just, you're you're winning in the beginning, right? Right. And it's it's the same debt. You know, we're finding great this low interest rate environment allows for fantastic cash flow with uh, the increased cap rates. Right, and it's interesting too because you're not having to, to compete with these foreign investors that uh, we're competing with in some of these markets or brokering properties. You'll see a foreign investor that you know they've, like you said, they can buy a, at a lower cap rate because they're trying to just protect their money. Well, what about uh, your uh, occupancy and your rents in those markets? How has that been trending? Well, we're, we're continuing to see strong rent growth and very high high occupancies. Um, they're very healthy, vibrant markets. Um, sometimes that's forgotten. Our typical rent growth in our portfolio has been three to five percent, and occupancies in excess of ninety five percent across the portfolio. And we still think there's a lot of runway uh, to grow the rents in our portfolio. Uh, residents are making strong incomes; they're paying less for housing uh, because they're. You know, this renters by choice concept you read about 
they have the capacity and, and willingness to pay more for quality product and, and superior service. So that is what we're focusing on. Right. So are your residents then in those areas uh, possibly uh, have a less rent? So I know some, some apartment communities say they want to seem to pay the uh, rent with one week's pay or, or two weeks pay. Uh, your tenants have more income? Well, I, I use this example with our investors when describing our investment strategy. It's um, if we're ultimately in increasing the value of a property, you have to increase the revenue. So obviously we manage expenses, but we find the most value to be gained through increasing revenue. And if we compare our one of our properties in Kansas City, for instance, with a property in San Francisco, uh, we're using to qualify our residents a three times rent, so meaning that they have to make uh, gross income each month at three times whatever the rental rate is. Okay. So an average Kansas City rent being $1,000 a month compared to an average rent in San Francisco, for instance, which is $3,900 a month, our residents will qualify with a $36,000 a year uh, salary or income, whereas in San Francisco, uh, that for the same average apartment would have to make in excess of $140,000 a year. So when we're talking about increasing rents, if we're looking to increase rents 5% in Kansas City, it's, it's uh, on an average apartment, it'd be $50 increase a month, right. which would require $600 in annual income. If you're looking at the same increase in San Francisco, a 5% increase would represent almost $200 wow. A month increase, which is would require an additional seven thousand dollars in annual income. So, yeah. I think we have a lot of runway uh, in our midwestern market, where I, I believe in some of these other markets where these rents are already very, very high. They're going to reach a, a plateau um, yeah. where there's going to be an affordability ceiling. Well, affordability is a big issue. And stay tuned. We'll take a quick break. We'll have more on management tips for apartment owners. Stay with us. The Commercial Real Estate Show is brought to you by Bull Realty, Asset and Occupancy Solutions. Excelligent, building data everywhere. Valuate, easily share what-if analysis with colleagues online. And First Service Solutions, your CMBS borrower advocate. For more information on how these businesses may be of service to you, visit CREshow.com. <laughs> 